Guiana Space Center, 2003. An RN-5 rocket stands ready for launch, carrying an unusual vehicle and crew on board. This is the story of the vehicle that never was. The original vision for European independent crewed spaceflight and how the dream was lost. In the 1980s, a new kind of American spacecraft reigned the skies, the space shuttle. The first reusable spacecraft, it launched as a rocket, and its wings allowed a controlled return towards a desired location. The shuttle sparked the space plane frenzy around the globe, from the United Kingdom to Japan. As Europe was developing the Ariane family of rockets in the late 1970s, CNES, the French space agency, performed studies of crew capability concepts to provide European autonomy in human spaceflight. In 1983, a spaceplane concept was chosen for further development, later christened Hermes. Work was contracted to Aerospatial to carry primary responsibility for the project and the so for aerodynamic and heating aspects. I was in charge of both the thermal protection and structure. I like both aviation and space. For me, Hermes was a miracle. <laughs> At last, I could join the two, the two things. I'm also a pilot and I'm also a candidate for astronaut. So. Maybe, uh, I thought, uh, maybe one day I will fly on Hermes. <laughs> the spacecraft was too heavy to fly in the currently existing Ariane 4 as originally intended and requires a more capable launch vehicle from Ariane Spas. For this reason, the Ariane 5, the European workhorse of satellite launch vehicles for the past 27 years, was human rated and sized to carry Hermes. For the first time, uh, Europe would have been really autonomous with the launcher with uh, the shuttle. I was one of the first guys to arrive in Lemuro, the Ariane factory and managing company at the time. We were about 20 people, uh, both Aerospatial and Dassault. In the meantime, the thing was beginning to be European. And what is not well known is that uh, this was an instant success. Everybody in Europe wanted to work on Hermes. And the reason is very clear, because France could not do everything. So all the companies in Europe, the big ones, saw that uh, there was a very interesting technological transfer from France about to start. And then the thing became bigger and bigger, of course, being European. And this kept evolving every year. It was necessary to, to change, uh, including uh, the aerodynamic shape. The Hermes configuration that we know today arrived around 1991. With the flight deck similar to an Airbus A320 cockpit, Hermes would carry a crew of three and a payload of approximately three tons in the low Earth orbit. These figures, however, were reduced from the originally proposed capabilities to carry a crew of four to six and a cargo size of 4.5 tons. Unlike the American shuttle and earlier design iterations, it did not have a payload bay, but rather a habitable space extending to the aft. An adapter module housing life support systems and propulsion would be attached, in addition to serving as an interface to the RN5 launch vehicle. Hermes uh, was in a way a right size, not too big, so it could be launched frequently. It would have been a more robust, as we say now, because of these uh, screw tiles. It was not too small either. It would have been a perfect shuttle. À tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage, Lucas. Allumage des deux des deux AP, décollage, Ariane, VA 247. The space plane was named Hermes, after the Greek messenger of the gods, by the son of then Knesset director of launch vehicles, Frederik Dallest. The idea was that the space plane would deliver messages, or payloads, to the modern day gods, astronauts in an orbiting space station. Enter the Columbus program, 
which originally consisted of a European space station called the Columbus Man Tended Free Flyer, to which the Hermes would ferry back and forth. Later, the Columbus Laboratory module was added to the program as part of the American Space Station Freedom, which later evolved into the International Space Station, or the ISS. The ISS, however, was one of the major factors that led to the downfall of the European Columbus Station and Hermes in 1992, reducing the need for an independent European spacecraft. Besides cost overruns and further evolved concepts failing to fulfill modified requirements, various factors and unpredictable circumstances led to the cancellation of Hermes, such as weak project management, the recession of the European economy, and the economic aftermath of German reunification. Everybody was uh, stunned, and uh, we found this very bad. Huh? Some uh, engineers really uh, nearly cried. Huh? It was terrible for us, including me. Huh? Several German guys were very, very angry. And um, after that, we had uh, two or three um, Hermes meetings in Toulouse, organized. I remember one of them, we had uh, Jean-Pierre Ignoré, who was in orbit, and he delivered to us a message saying, we must know one day who canceled Hermes. <laughs> Coming from an astronaut. Despite its cancellation, Hermes left a legacy in the European space program. The technologies developed through its course carried its spirit in the later historical projects and will continue to do so in the future. There was still a spin-off because um, uh, the avionics were reused for the ARD, Atmospheric Reentry Demonstrator. Demonstrator. So some Hermes, Hermes engineers continued on the program for that, and uh, we were very anxious because if ARD had failed, <laughs> we would have, you know, you see, you, we told you. <laughs> In 2015, ESA successfully launched and recovered the Intermediate Experimental Vehicle, or IXV, a testbed to demonstrate and qualify European reentry technologies. Much of its systems were leveraged from Hermes, such as the use of fastened tiles for its thermal protection system, the IXV paved the way for the Space Rider program, currently planned to begin operations in 2025 to bring payloads into low Earth orbit and conduct missions as long as two months. In 2022, Ariane Group revived the vision for autonomous European access to space at the 73rd International Astronautical Congress. Plans to build the smart upper stage for innovative exploration, or SUSE, were announced to the public. Modular and reusable, this extension of the Ariane 6 launch vehicle would carry a four-person crew and a seven-ton cargo to Earth orbit and beyond. A maiden launch is targeted for 2031. The project, with its ambitious nature and schedule, echoes the past of Hermes. Only time will tell if it will meet the same fate as its ancestor.